the 1950s science fiction podcast. Season 1, episode 3, science fiction, science fiction comic books from the 1950s. Hello and welcome once again to the 1950s science fiction podcast. I hope you've been enjoying the material I've been presenting so far. Please feel free to send any feedback via message button on the profile where we listen to the podcast. You can also follow me on Twitter and leave me a DM. In today's episode, I will be discussing the comic books of the 1950s, a subject I more recently came across by the internet and by reprints of vintage comic titles. I also have a small library of comics from the 1950s downloaded to my laptop. There are titles I've never heard of until I saw them on the web. Perhaps the most well-known is EC Comics, which I will talk about more in detail during the podcast. The 1950s had all kinds of comic book adventures throughout the decade, with most of the material aimed at juvenile audiences. Science fiction did find its way through the decade with such titles as Space Adventures, Captain Science, and Other Worlds. There are even more comics with similar titles competing for competing with one another as well. I haven't read many science fiction 50s comics until more recently, so I am just becoming more familiar with the, with the media itself. I may have read some 50s comics when I was much younger, but I will, but it was it's been such a long time I can't remember even if I did read them and when. The comics I will discuss in the issues are from my downloads. Some are pre-code, while others have Comics Code Authority stamp on the cover. The Rise of the Comics Code Authority The decade of the 1950s brought prosperity to American society, along with an increasing population of children. A result of the baby boom that occurred after World War II, returning servicemen and women got married and produced children by the millions after the war was over. The resulting increase drove the demand for much of entertainment for juvenile audiences, and comic book sales increased. However, with the rise of the population, other problems soon followed. Juvenile delinquency increased dramatically as well. The rising crime rate by juveniles became so alarming to American society that the U.S. Congress conducted a hearing in the matter. The U.S. Senate convened a a subcommittee to investigate the rising delinquency rate and to examine its causes during 1953. The following year, the committee investigated the comics industry due to allegations allegations made by experts that comics created a bad influence on children. One such expert was was a German-American psychiatrist, Frederick Warham, who wrote a nonfiction book titled Seduction of the Innocent. In his book, Warham claimed that comics were a negative influence on the children children of America. He cited examples of adult-oriented content within the comic stories themselves, such as drug use, extreme violence, and sexual content. His book was a minor bestseller and aided in the outrage against comics. However, this didn't stop the comics industry from publishing comics. The result of the congressional hearings was the formation of the Comics Code Authority, or CCA. CCA was a board of censors that that was self-imposed by the comics, comics industry and was not required by law to do so but on a voluntary compliance. The code was similar to the Hayes Code used by the motion picture industry during the 1930s and onward. The code had strict rules as to what was allowed in comics. No vulgar language, no nudity or sexual situations, and no explicit violence or mutilation. The writer also had to be careful in his depictions of authority figures as well. The the Comic Code Authority lasted until about 2011, and then it became defunct. The publishers decided to ignore it because they felt it was no longer relevant in contemporary times. The code did get revised in the 70s, however. It was still restrictive. Moreover, the publishers didn't fear any retaliations from advertisers as they did during the 50s. While some comic book publishers created their rating system for publications, it would contain a warning for mature audience, a warning for mature readers. 
It's also interesting to note that Dr. Warham would later receive discredit for his book, Seduction of Innocent. Experts in the same profession cited flawed research methods used for the book's reasoning. Pre-code science fiction comics. Now, I want to talk to you about some 50 science sci-fi comics that were pre-code. I don't think that sci-fi comics were affected by the scandal that much. It was mostly horror and crime comics that had the most complaints against the industry. However, sci-fi comics still slipped into some adult-oriented themes. I believe I've seen some adult themes in a few of the pre-code comics I, that I have. For example, in the sci-fi comic Strange Worlds, the cover art does show a scantily clad woman attempting to get into a spaceship while being chased by a gruesome alien being. Also, the first story features a scantily clad dancing girl as well. The first story in the comic is the, is the continuing adventures of Keaton of the Star Patrol. The installment is titled The Corsars from the Coal Sack. The series is about the exploits of a Buck Rogers type of character who runs out and saves the universe, along with scantily clad women during the far, during the far future. The introduction reads as follows. The atomic bombs that fell on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945 were the opening thunders of the atomic era, culminating in the 1962 rocket landing on the moon. In 1977, a man set foot on Mars. A century later, on Alpha Centauri, the nearest star. By the year 3750, many star clusters have been explored. Their planetary systems join with Earth Federation to police the vast area of billions of miles of empty space to guard the treasures, treasure-laden cargo spacers, the Star, Patrol, the Star Patrol was born. The series ran from 1950 to 1952 and published by Avon Comics. It was acquired by Atlas Comics, a forerunner to Marvel during 1952. The comic was an anthology series that showcased the artwork of Wally Wood. Wood has since become famous in comic book circles as one of the best artists of the era. Keaton of the Star Patrol was an ongoing series during the comic's publication. The comic, published during the pre-code years, was determined by me not to be too explicit by current standards. I, it did show adults drinking and smoking in some panels, but I think it was the scantily clad female that got people talking. Other pre-code sci-fi comics were less offensive. One comic called Captain Science appears more and more wholesome. I've read a few issues and found it to be acceptable, acceptable for young readers. The series is about a father and son who, after meeting with an alien being, become defenders of the Earth. They engage in battle with aliens and use the high-tech high tech the alien, an alien left them to use before he died. The series has seven issues published, starting in November of 1950, and the last one printed the following year. Comic book artist Wally Wood was one of the three artists in the production of the comic or youthful magazines. EC Comics, Incredible Science Fiction and Weird Fantasy. The 1950s sci-fi comics I want to talk about here are EC Comics series Incredible Science Fiction and Weird Fantasy. EC Comics stood for Entertainment Comics and was founded by Maxwell Gaines and later ran by his son, William. Comic book, the comic book publisher specialized in many different genres, which included science fiction. The company produced comics with mature themes after William Gaines took over for his deceased father. The company started publication during World War II, World War II and ceased in 1956. Unlike his father, William decided to incorporate social and political messages in the comic book stories. The subjects the comics tackled were civil rights, inequality, anti-war and disarmament, and the environment. I have in my online comic library, library two volumes of EC archives published by Dark Horse Comics. The set contains stories published between 1950 and 1956 during the pre-COVID years and just after the creation of the CCA. The stories are great. The artwork is fantastic for its time as well. I have read almost the first volume and read most of the second one. 
I love reading the stories. There are there is everything from space travel, aliens, time travel, and visions of the future. The series just the series just has about anything a sci-fi fan would want. I do have a few favorite stories in the series, and I will discuss them now. The first one is called Spawn of Mars. This story is about an expedition to planet Mars sometime in the future. Among the four astronauts is one female who got selected after dozens of other applicants. One thing about the female space explorer is she is there to do a series to a series of scientific work, serious scientific work, not there to cook, clean, or look pretty. As the expedition progresses, she has a funny feeling that the crew is under observation by something. A couple of the male crew members investigate. Only one returns. A crew member who is missing later turns up, and the female explorer is relieved. She, she, she had already started a romance with the fellow crew member. When they get back to Earth, he's, he, he asks her to marry him, and they get settled as a new couple. The couple also becomes affluent after the return after the return home because she is the first woman to set foot on Mars. They share an expensive home and he has the latest sports car. However, tragedy, tragedy strikes when the car runs off the road and the husband gets killed. As he lays there dying, she sees that he is really an alien monster. Then the, then the car explodes, leaving no trace of the alien monster. She wakes up in the hospital, and then the nurse tells her that her husband is dead. Just when you think, just when you think things get go worse or even get worse, well, it gets even worse. The nurse also tells the wife that she is pregnant. Oh boy! The story Spawn of Mars was written by Al Feinstein and William Gaines, with Wally Wood as the artist. It first appeared in Wired Fantasy Number no. Nine in the September October nineteen. The artwork is, in this story is excellent. In keeping with the progressive stance of the comic, they created a female heroine who negated the stereotypes of the period. Another favorite story of mine is called The Inferiors. This story is another space exploration adventure set in the far future. A crew of a rocket ship is continuing to explore distant planets for signs of life. They orbit around a world that shows the remnants of a past civilization. They land on the surface and examine the ruins of a city. The crewman finds that a statue of one of the inhabitants and a recording device is then discovered inside of it. The device is taken back to the ship for examination. One of the scientists aboard can decode the alien language in the recording and learns a copious amount of information about the inhabitants. He finds that the aliens who dominated the planet centuries ago restored themselves in a war in a war with other worlds. The planet in the planet, inhabited by a race of reptilian creatures, was desperate to find a way to preserve their species. They find a means by evolving into different life forms. That life form was, was a human being. Once again, another shock ending to the comic that was a shock ending that the comic was famous for doing. The Inferiors, written by Al Feinstein, drawn by William Bolly Wood, and published in Weird Science Fantasy, issue number 28, March, April 1955. The story makes use of the ancient astronaut theory as a plot device. The stories often remind me of the sci-fi radio series drama X-1. The radio series had presented some of Ray Bradbury's short stories around the same time EC Comics published their own version. Short stories such as Zero Hour, Mars is Heaven, and There Will Come Soft Rains were some of the, his be, some of his best known work at the time. As mentioned before, EC Comics was not only was not not without controversy. One famous sci-fi story from Weird Fantasy issue 18, April 1953, entitled Judgment Day. An astronaut travels to a world run by rob, robots only to discover that robots have a class system among themselves. While turning in, while turning in the, uh, his report about the planet, the astronaut never takes off his helmet. Or while touring the planet, the astronaut never takes off his helmet due to the atmosphere. When finished, he sends a report back stating that the world is not ready for contact with the Galactic Federation. Upon doing so, he removes his helmet and reveals, and, and reveals that the astronaut is black. 
This comment created an uproar with the CCA, and they wanted the black character removed. Gaines refused to do so and ran the story uncensored. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this episode of the podcast. I plan on being back as soon as I can with another examination on 50 sci-fi. If you like what I'm doing, please send me feedback. Also, feel free to support me as well. Just follow the links on your podcast player page. And thanks for listening.